Wait a minute, didn't the Atari Lynx only have 70 odd games? How many Easter eggs could there be? Shouldn't this video be a YouTube short? Or even just a tweet? Why does an obscure video game console from the early 1990s need a top 10 Easter eggs video? I'll be mostly using emulation in this video. My favourite way to run Lynx games is on a PlayStation Vita running RetroArch. Though I'd love an FPGA based handheld in a mini Lynx form factor. But the Vita is convenient, easily moddable and has some Lynx vibes going on. I appreciate the original hardware as well, but that's becoming more of a collector's piece than an optimal way to play Lynx games. So with my Vita, I've chosen 10 Easter eggs to feature, with everything from functional to spectacular. Counting down from 10, the first game is Road Blasters, a combat racing game first released by Atari into arcades in 1987. The 1990 Lynx version really captures the frantic pace of the original arcade version. All 50 levels from the original game are included, as you race down this ever-winding road and blow away other vehicles, collect their fuel and gain power-ups in this fast-paced frenzy of action and speed. Here we can see the Lynx really living up to its reputation as a system with fast, colourful graphics. But the Lynx has no save game features, making having to restart games each time from lower levels less enticing for a home-based console. That's where this first Easter egg comes into play. Starting the game as a rookie and then driving on the left side while holding the B button until crashing into the first tree switches to a picture of the developer shown as a strange ghost in the machine figure with just a single number sitting in the top right corner. There's no mention that this is indeed a level select option, but that's exactly what this does. Choosing a number such as 45 skips you ahead 45 levels in the game. This Easter egg looks more like a hidden developer testing option rather than the sort of option Atari would want to hide in their games. This is the sort of Easter egg I like. Kind of weird, but also quite useful. In ninth place we have Hockey, a beat em up and fighting game in which you punch your opponent while occasionally playing a game of hockey. This is a decent enough sports game, sometimes criticised for its less than stellar graphics on the Lynx, but I think they get the job done. The fighting sometimes happens during matches, but can also be accessed as its own mini game from the main menu. This game has the ability to generate custom teams with different abilities and then later recall those teams using a password system. There's a special hidden password, BATS XPEB. When entered, shows the X in the password turning into a heart. Pressing OK then shows a bat flying on the screen and a saying that indicates that the game is now ready to do your bidding. Starting a game, we now find a new team listed called The Bats, with maxed out capabilities that can only be reached with this password. And with that, you can now go smash your opponents. Though, as it turns out, even with this super team, I'm not very good at this game. I also keep getting smashed in the mini fighting game as well. The next game on the list is pretty interesting. At number 8 is Todd's Adventures in Slime World, a puzzle action platformer with a focus on the slimy and weird. Your main weapon is a water cannon, which will blow creatures apart when they get hit by water. If you turn too green from the slime, you'll burst apart and have to start again. There are also pools of water located throughout the game, in which you can wash the green slime away and bring some colour back to your character. but there's a small easter egg that needs to be mentioned. Located in the instructions area, go through the pages and find the page where Todd is looking green and press the option one button. You'll find a ball of pus appears. Pressing the A and B buttons repeatedly will slowly cause the ball of pus to expand until finally it pops. While this may not be much of a hidden mini game, Todd's Adventures in Slime World is an amazing game 
with a labyrinth of levels that sometimes includes secret passageways and hidden areas to explore. There's also an invincibility easter egg that can be activated from the title screen by holding the option 2 and option 1 buttons and up and right on the d-pad. This game has strange creatures, fantastic gameplay and maximum slime. There are items scattered throughout each level including bombs, shields and even a jetpack for flying through some of the more challenging parts. Just don't fly your jetpack into a pool of water or it will explode, taking you with it. This amazing game was made by Epix, a company known for their Commodore 64 games in the late 1980s. But Epix also designed the Atari Lynx's hardware. They were a game development studio, and they also just happened to develop one of the most intriguing game consoles of all time. They then later sold this design to Atari, who had the funds to put the console into mass production. I have here my version 2 of the original Lynx and it's running Todd's Adventures in Slime World. The LCD screen on the original hardware doesn't quite have the same punch as today's technology. But this was 1987. It was handheld, it was colour, and it was amazing. Doing a side-by-side -side comparison shows that RetroArch, running on the PlayStation Vita, does a great job of running Lynx games. During demanding gameplay, with lots of moving elements on the screen, RetroArch does a stellar job of keeping up with the emulation. In these parts, even the original Lynx hardware does seem to struggle a little bit, but it's the gameplay that matters, and for the most part, the emulation is accurate and responsive. Lynx games are a real pleasure to play on the PlayStation Vita. Staying with games from Epix, at number 7 is Blue Lightning, another Lynx exclusive release and launch title for the system. The game is a graphics powerhouse and an awesome gaming experience. Epix, as the original Lynx hardware designers, really understood this platform when it came to developing games for it. This is easily one of the top games for the Lynx. So what kind of easter eggs did Epix include here? On the canyons level, if you decide to activate your afterburners just as you're flying into the canyons, you'll get the You've Got Guts bonus, which will give you a huge 30,000 extra points. And if you make it through that alive and activate your afterburners in the second set of canyons, you'll get the even bigger 65,000 point lunatic bonus. And the game will tell you straight up, you're crazy. There's a real oddity in this game as well. On level 7, when flying at close to maximum altitude, towards the middle of the level, something odd appears in the sky. In the middle of nowhere, you'll find two runways, just floating up there amongst the clouds. You can't land on them, and they appear to be an unintentional glitch in the game. Though Atari did include this weird artifact in their internal Lynx Hidden Tips book, which is where many of these easter eggs were originally documented. This is the original book that was used to leak these hidden easter eggs out to game magazines of the time. Epix made some of the best games for the Atari Lynx, and the next is no exception. At number 6 we've got Electrocop, another original launch title for the Lynx and Lynx exclusive release. Epix really used the power of the graphics hardware for this game. You can really see the hardware sprite scaling being used here to produce a cool looking 3D environment. Electrocop includes computer terminals located throughout the game. These are used for game instructions and code hacking to open the locked doors. Opening them will reveal new weapons or lead you to other levels throughout the game. But the computer terminals also include three extra mini-games that can be played to pass the time. While not technically hidden easter eggs, I really like the way they are included in this game. The user manual describes these games as a good way to relieve stress caused by your dangerous quest. There's also a hidden level select option. To access it, turn off the sound on the title screen and hold the up button while pressing A and B. You can now choose to start the game at any level. A welcome easter egg in an impressive game. 
At number five now, we've got Toki. This is a port of the popular 1989 arcade game of the same name. A platform game with the ability to shoot enemies both sideways and overhead as well. This game was ported to the Lynx by the legendary Taito company. But you have to wonder, what was going on with the developers when you find the hidden easter egg in this game? When the game ends and the continue option appears, with 9 seconds left, press and hold option 1 and the up button. Wait until the title screen and the developer's names appear. This makes the title screen go absolutely crazy, with all sorts of coloured lights and sounds. I mean, it's really weird. We can also get a glimpse of the developers in another easter egg. Hold the option 1 and up buttons when the game ends, but before the continue screen. Keep holding until a small dot appears. Then start pressing buttons repeatedly. You can either press the A and B buttons or the D-pad buttons. Press them as fast as you can and the dot will slowly expand. Keep pressing and try not to slow down. And you'll be able to expand a picture of the team that developed Toki for the Lynx. Sitting in fourth spot is Lexus. This game was released in 1999, a few years after the discontinuation of the Lynx. Independent developers continued to release games for the Lynx after Atari had moved on. This game normally runs in Tate mode, though with emulation it's easy to rotate the screen. This game is a cross between Scrabble and Tetris. The object is to stack letters up together and make words that disappear from the stack. While on the table of contents screen, press left, right, left, right, down, up, option one, option two. Starting the game now completes the word Scientology, which may or may not be suppressive here. Starting the game again shows the hidden sequence that we just entered, and then starts a port of Galaxian. Perhaps not the greatest port of the game, but a really good easter egg to find hidden in this game. While the Lynx wasn't as popular as the Game Boy, or lasted as long, or had as many games, there remains a dedicated scene of fans and developers that continues to this day, with new homebrew games and demos continuing to appear on this system. The Lynx is a console that never really died in the minds of its fans. It's a system with a style and a mystique all of its own. As we will see when we look at the last three games on the list, Three great games with some amazing easter eggs. At number three is Zalor Mercenary, a vertical shooter released in 1990. This is another of the great epics developed Lynx games and another Lynx exclusive. It's a challenging but generally fun shooter. It's got power ups and a number of varied levels throughout the game. But it's the easter egg I find most intriguing. Go to the character selection screen while holding option 1. Press up, down, left, right, up. This activates a hidden game called Conway's Game of Life. Though it's not really much of a game, more of a cellular automata engine, with some simple rules to turn each cell on or off depending on its neighbours. There is a drawing option to add or remove cells, and a copy and paste function to copy sections of the board around. It's a fascinatingly complex system, built from a very simple premise, and it's even Turing complete, meaning, on a big enough board, this environment can simulate any other computer system inside itself, just like Minecraft. Almost at the end of the list, in second place, is Chip's Challenge. Yet another Lynx launch title from Epix. This is a really good puzzle game that was then later ported to other systems. It's one of the many Lynx games that uses level codes to access higher levels. A very welcome feature for a game with 148 levels. The levels are satisfying and fun to play. It's no wonder this game was ported to other systems. And thanks to homebrew developers, the Lynx version is still having new custom levels added today. However, the Lynx version of Chip's Challenge is unique because when entering the level code MAND, it drops you into a hidden Mandelbrot fractal generator. Typically, it takes several minutes to render a full screen image using the Lynx's 4MHz CPU. 
there's an explorer function that can zoom right in or out to different sections of the fractal. Epics were an amazing company. They must have really loved the links when developing these games. The ability to render fractal images on a handheld device in full colour in 1989 was an amazing easter egg to hide. And that brings us to the number one easter egg on the Atari Lynx, and it's in the game Battlezone 2000. This is one of the last official Atari games released for the Lynx. Battlezone was originally a green screen vector graphics arcade game from 1980. This is one of the first ever first person shooter games ever made. The Lynx does a decent job of replicating the look of the original wireframe graphics. I find it to be an enjoyable but fairly average game on the system. But it's the hidden easter egg game where things get really interesting. To get there, on the configuration screen, press option 1 three times. It can be a bit tricky, so you have to get the timing right. This brings up a completely different version of the game. Different selectable environments and weird creatures. It's basically a different game. The story I read was, the developers had originally made this version of the game as the sequel to Battlezone. When they showed it to Atari, Atari instead asked for a more traditional version of Battlezone. The developers then made this more traditional version of the game, but they also hid their original version as an easter egg. And when you compare this version with what you get in the original game, this would have to be one of the most amazing easter eggs ever hidden in a game. This easter egg also includes the ability to play in multiplayer mode, with other Lynxes connected together with Comlynx cables, a feature that wasn't included in even the regular version of the game. Where would a top 10 list be without a special mention? And for this, I'm honouring the amazing Stun Runner. It's fast and intense, just like the original arcade game. The Lynx had the only decent port of this game, even compared to ports on more powerful systems at the time, such as the Commodore Amiga. Stun Runner is a hoot to play on the Lynx. The Lynx is an amazing gaming system. It runs on an 8-bit 6502-based CPU, of the same type used in the Commodore 64, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and the Tamagotchi. But it's the 16-bit GPU that really makes this console. The Lynx GPU runs at 16 MHz, four times the speed of the CPU, with powerful hardware sprite scaling and manipulation. The graphics can run at a frame rate of up to 75 FPS. This graphics hardware, combined with the limited pixel count of the display, means the Lynx can throw full colour game graphics around, like a ragdoll in heat. This capability is what gives graphics in Lynx games their really unique look. The final question is, does this game have an easter egg? Stun Runner allows you to start the game on levels 1, 6 or 11. First complete level 11, then when starting level 12, collect the first boost power up on the right hand side and stay elevated until you take the overhead tunnel, which you'll then go through a warp and take you right to the end of the level. Starting the next level, you will have skipped ahead to level 18. I'm relying on your donations to keep these videos coming. Thank you. If you want to donate to this channel, then I now have super thanks as well as Patreon. These donations really help keep these videos coming. But all these videos are offered for free. If you're enjoying this channel and don't want to donate, then you don't need to. So stick around, because there will be more videos coming. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.